So, second thing, I knew that Princess Tara did not mean offense by that Indian comment. She said, I'm dirty like an Indian. I immediately knew that she was, you know, in her mind, she's picturing like Last of the Mohicans or like Pocahontas where they live in the forest and sleep in teepees and are running around and jumping in trees and foraging for food. Like that's what she meant. She didn't mean like Native American people don't bathe and they don't respect themselves. Give me a break, you guys. Come on. She, in her mind, she's like, I live in the forest. I'm like an Indian. So, obviously, a majority, like I said, 28,000 of you understand that. There's a very small number of you that are like, that's offensive! And that's the other thing I want to talk about. There's this, this weird phenomena where every time that you're critical of us, it makes me want to share less and less of my life with you. Now, that's a life lesson. Take me out of it. Take the shaytards out of it. Take YouTube out of it. Think about the people that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Your friends, the people you go to school with, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your parents, anybody that you interact with face-to-face, -face, if that's how you are in real life, where you're overly critical and overly sensitive and you get offended by every little thing somebody says, nobody's gonna wanna be you know, open with you. Nobody's gonna trust you to tell you their feelings. Nobody's gonna see you as a confidant. Nobody's going to trust you as a good friend that they can come to and talk to because they're always going to be worried that you're going to be mad or offended by every little thing that they do and say. That's just a free life lesson. That if you're critical and you point the finger that every time somebody messes up, people are not going to open up to you. And you will lead a very lonely life. If you are super critical of everything that everybody around you says and does, you will have very few friends. I don't care what you say about me or my family. That's just a free life lesson. And I've learned that and I've seen it happen in business, on sports teams, with kids that I hung out with. The kids who are always like, you did it, it's like, nobody wants to be around that person. And if you're like that on the internet and in the comments and you get offended by every little stupid thing somebody says, you're probably like that in real life. And people don't want to hang out with those kind of people. And if they do, it's probably other people like that who are constantly finding fault in other people. All right? So I'm just saying that as a little life tip. It's human nature. It's human nature to do that because misery loves company. Or, you know, it's for some reason in our human minds, we feel like if we can bring somebody down a peg by saying what they did was wrong, it will somehow make you feel better. That's just true with the human species. I don't know why it is or why we think that, but it's almost like we have this perception. It's like, if I can pull them down, then somehow that makes me better. And that is a huge myth. That is so not true. And you will lead a very unhappy life if you're thinking that. If you lift others up and help others, you will be lifted. Rising tides lifts all ships. Think about that saying. And I really appreciate this conversation. I think it's helpful. You know, I don't, I hope I really genuinely do not want to come across as like, I know everything and this is the way it is. I sincerely feel like this is a learning experience for me. Like we are discussing life and how to live it and how to interact with one another as humans. And if I mess up, I will be okay. And, I, and there's been times where I've done or said something that, you know, probably wasn't right and you guys give me crap about it in the comments and I'm like, shut up. You know, it's that, that human nature, that tendency to be like, I don't want to hear what I did wrong. But I feel like I'm learning to overcome that. Like with the whole, the, the homeless sign thing the other day, it felt good to be able to say, you know what, maybe that wasn't right. It, it's like almost liberating to admit that you're wrong. It's, it feels good to be like, you know, I talked about that on that book. If you guys listen to our podcast, I'm listening to this book called The Power of Now. The second that you can get rid of that need to be right, it is so freeing. And I've been experimenting with it the last couple weeks where it's like, yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Let, let me just think about that. What if, what if I'm not right about that? That's okay. I just want to learn what's right. That feels so good to not like hold up this wall and have this tightness you know, in the scriptures, it talks about a hard heart, this hard heart where you're like, oh, you're, ugh, and you try to like fight this position that you have. The second that you can be like, okay, maybe you're right. Let's talk, like, let me think about it. Let me walk in your shoes. Sincerely, not just saying that to like seem like you're a nice person, but to really be like, maybe I'm not right about this. Maybe I'm wrong. How can I be honest with myself and my own devil's advocate and ask myself, is this really the right way? Or maybe I'm wrong and maybe I need to fix it or maybe I need to like think about this differently. 
So it feels good to be able to do that. And I encourage all of us to do that. And that's what I hope this conversation can be, where we're all just like, this happened. What Princess Tart said could be found as offensive. The nine-year-old little girl that she is, I know that she meant no offense by it. And maybe we shouldn't jump on her right away. Or when other people say or do things that you don't agree with, maybe they have a different perspective or paradigm than you. Interesting stuff. Okay, I've blabbed on long enough. I love you guys.